In this video, we're going to talk about palette-based effects and how you can use those in your show and how you can create them and modify them using the palettes in the console. So to get started, we have the Chauvet demo show loaded up here. We're going to work primarily with our spots. We're going to turn them on and we're going to come up here to add effect. Once we add the effect, we see that we have intensity, position, color, and beam, the same attribute sets that we use for our palettes. Choosing the appropriate one will allow you to add a palette based effect for those attributes. In this example, we're going to stick primarily with color just because it's the easiest one to visualize. It's also the most common attribute set on all fixtures these days. So we're going to hit color. You'll see that we have a handful of different effects that all say CMY or color in a number. Two CMY, two color, two color position, three CMY, three color, and so on. Each of these has their own set of attributes that they use. Any of them that say CMY are going to use just the three, co three channel color mixing system, so CMY or RGB. Any of them that say color on them are going to use the entire color attribute set. So this includes color wheels, CTO channels, uh, white, amber, UV, lime, those various colors beyond our normal RGB. And then the ones that say two color position will actually allow you to choose color and position palettes together. So to get started, we're going to choose the, one of the effects that we want. So we're choosing a three-step palette-based effect. It's going to use the entire color attribute set. So it's going to use all the colors plus CTO, color wheel, and so on, as explained before. Once we click it, we get a pop-up that says select palette one to use in the effect. So we're going to pick our first color. We'll click red. It's going to pop up again. We'll say select palette two. We're going to pick white and select palette three, and we'll pick blue. You'll see once we do that, we're taken back to the programmer window and the view effects window, and we have a normal effects line here. One thing you may notice is added in addition to the name of the effect and the fixtures that are in it. We have three boxes here for the three palettes that we chose. Now this works like any other effect. We can do things like change its direction. We can change the crossfade. If we were to do 25, you see that we get less of a fade between our colors. So again, just like any other effect in the desk. We can also change the colors we've chosen. If we mispressed or we decide we didn't like this color combination, we don't have to start over. We can modify these boxes for the palettes. So if we wanted to change this to a CMY effect, if we went to color one and we chose cyan, color two, we'll go to yellow, color three, we'll go to magenta. You see that now we have a CMY effect. So very easy to create and modify these effects from the view effects window as you're programming. Uh, great busking option to be able to quickly change colors from song to song if you're working in the programmer and busking a show. And they record just like any other effect. So if we're happy with our CMY effect, we'll record and touch a playback. We'll call this effect CMY. And when we clear out and bring the effect up, we get exactly what we expected. Now, the advantage of a palette based effect is that it references those palettes every time it's triggered. That means rather than having values coded into the effect that are the values for CMY, it's actually asking these palettes down here for cyan, yellow, and magenta what they should do. What this means is any change to these palettes will change that effect. As an example, if we were to take our yellow color here, and change it in some way. Maybe we make it a completely different color. Maybe we make it blue. Here we go. We make this a totally different color. We hit record and we touch yellow. We say, yes, we want to update yellow to make it blue. You'll see the second I commit that change, my CMY effect is now a cyan blue and magenta effect. Because again, it's referencing this palette and this palette, according to the values in it, is telling our spots to be blue. We can fix that simply by selecting our fixtures again, selecting the palette and correcting the color to yellow again, hitting record, touching the palette and updating it back to yellow. One of the advantages of this is because it uses the values from the palette, something like white, say for our red, white and blue effect we looked at a minute ago, every fixture, whether it's discharge or LED or a color wheel, they're all going to have a different shade of white. 
depending on the lamp that's in them, the optics, the reflector, the LED chips that are in them, what colors they have to choose from to create that white. So white is a common problem. If you try to just run a waveform across all of your fixtures, creating a white, your lights are all going to be a different color. In this example, though, because it uses the reference from the palette, if you update your white palette and adjust your fixtures accordingly to make your whites match across your rig, you'll always get a nice, clean, even white across in any fixture type in your rig. It also means slight updates to certain colors, some of these lights and darks and ambers that you might not see the same in the visualizer as you would see in real life. You can make updates on site and it'll directly affect and update your effects as well. So as mentioned, we can use these on a few other attributes. So we'll turn off our color effect now. We'll grab our fixtures. Again, we'll go to add effect. And this time maybe we'll choose a position effect. You see here we have something similar. We have two position, two position dim, three position, and four position. These are the palette based effects for position that are readily available. If we were to choose something like three position, we get a similar pop up to what we saw in color. And these are our position palettes. So now we can choose, say, fan out, fan up, and X. You'll see it spreads through the fixtures, just like you would expect in effect too. It's kind of hard to see what's going on there, but if we change our spread to zero, so they all do the same thing, you can now see it's going to our fan out position, and then it's going to our fly up and out position, and then it's coming back to our X position. Again, these are palette based, so changing these palettes will change what these fixtures are doing and the positions that they'll hit throughout the course of this effect. I hope you found this useful. As always, you can find us at www.campsislighting.com.